Alright then, guys, uh, hello, my name is a David, or Polo Monkey, or other, whatever, um, this is tutorial uh, number three, uh, and it is on how to layer materials and use articles and, like, add logos, whatever I eventually decide to call it will be up here, yay, uh, so yeah, uh, I thought of doing this tutorial after, it's quite a while ago, making a model of, or copying a model of, wait, of a standard, um, wow, well, word, standard, uh, like, I don't know what it is, like an internet meme, or, I don't know, it's something people have seemed to model quite a lot. Uh, it's the Dambo, like, cardboard box guy. And I have a final render of it on the interwebs. Hang on. So if I go to my, my web site, davidbush.tk, that's right. Uh, it's here. And also, here, I haven't really uploaded anything at all. Kind of just this. I'm a tad lazy like that. Also, there's other stuff here, but. That's all terribly fine and dandy. Um, so yeah, it's basically covering how to get the Amazon logo, which you can see. Oh my, here this onto another texture, uh, and without like merging or whatever. It's okay. So it's a good method. Trust me on that. Yeah. So to start with, what you want to do is you want to get hold of your interwebs and go on Google Images and you can use whatever, just get anything. You go I could go Amazon and me Ah, uh, uh Amazon Lego just find one. This will this will do to be honest. Anything. Uh, for, yeah, for this example, we're using Amazon because, you know, it's funky. Save image as. I've got Lion. That's why it looks so awesome. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to open up the Photoshops, which is so rapid. Um. <coughs> Oh god, opening things. Anyway, you want to open up the Photoshop's and wait for it to load. And then once we've got Photoshop open, we are going to uh, make it uh, like remove the background, the back of around, which I think I said in my first tutorial. God, all those many months ago, or oh, a week. Uh, so you want to open up your Fancy JPEG. I mean, you could just get a PNG, but that's obviously not as fun. So we want to do this. Uh, lay from background, just because I'm autistic. I'm not actually. That was a horrible joke. It wasn't a joke. That was meaningless. Moving on. Uh, you want to use your magic eraser or eraser or rubber if you're normal, and get rid of all the white. All the white. Uh, you can try and uh, I think I tried this before and it wasn't. I wasn't best pleased. Nah, it's not best pleased. Uh, get rid of all the white and the filling bit. So with the bit here, I'm actually just gonna do it pixel by pixel because I don't. Because you know the magic erase tools are a bit rubbish sometimes. Wow, I don't even know what I was trying to say. Uh, that didn't really work. Okay, well, whatever. You get a picture. I I hope. Anyway, yeah. When it's all complicated like that, just do it pixel by pixel. It pays off. Um. So then you have this. You wanna save as on your desktop. PSD will do because Cinema 4D is a genius and can cope. And keep Photoshop open by the way, just in case you want to make any changes quickly. 
So to add this, we want to first make a non-texture. So let's make a cardboard texture. Is it tech? No, this makes cardboard material. And I have a texture. My secret documents yet again. Gosh, uh, cardboard. Just get one of these off of the interwebs. Or whatever you're doing. But yeah, again, this this literally applies for everything. This is just an example I seem to have must mustered, mustered up, sort of. Uh, so you want, for this, for the cardboard thing, we want the colour, bit of bumperino, or bump in plain English. And when you're adding a texture, uh, most of the time you want to say yes for creating a path, because then when you... It is just better. God, professional opinion or what? Uh, as you can see, I'm being terribly technical and explaining every little thing I do. Um, add a bit of realistic reflection because everyone loves a bit of Fresnel because Grace Gorilla did it, and now everyone does it anyway. Uh, on this, I'm trying to bump up. Ah, uh, as it works. Yes, right. Uh, this isn't on this material. That was just for fun. For jokes. Alright, so then we want to add our base uh, material. That's what I'm calling it now. Uh, and then we make a new material and we go into the alpha. Uh, the alpha, what are these called? The alpha channel bit. Everyone knows what alpha channels are, I think. That's basically when there's no like background. Worst description ever, and then we load up our our PSD file that we just mustered up. I think I said that twice now, or thrice. Who's counting? Uh, and for this, we're going to make it black and a bit of a realistic reflection. Oh god, am I really bothering? Am, am I? It seems so. Anyway, so as long as you have alpha, and also if you've done it wrong, don't know why you would have just invert it. So it fixes itself. To be honest, it looks quite cool. Anyway, that's not the point. So then, once we have our alpha channel, alpha material, or whatever it is, uh, we add it to our our item of choice. And as you can see, what it's done here is gone a bit. It's like put it everywhere because the standard projection is UVW mapping. Because I knew that, not like I read it or anything. Anyway, uh, so we don't really want that unless that's what you're going for. Then, in that case, don't judge you. You know, uh, for the in this case, we want to change projection to flat, which <laughs> looks great. Uh, uh, we want to take tile off, and now for the funky bit, you want to make sure that your you have the texture select the texture tag, material whatever selected, and the cube selected or your item of choice. And then you come over to your left bar or panel and you click on R thirteen, you click this patino, the one that has the little checkerboard thing. And in previous version I think it's at the bottom, but it's got a checkerboard so you get the idea. And then you'll get this grid. Uh, when you have it on flat, that is, which will this kind of shows you that this is the this is the material placed on it, uh, and you can move it around. Let's use these lovely axis pans. But what we want to do is, you can see it's a bit stretched, and that's a bit awful because we all know that's not what it look, not what it looks like. You just resize it to however you think you want to resize it, and I think in R thirteen they changed this. Well, maybe they did in R12, but in 11.5, it's the scaling tool for this is really awkward. You have to you have to do it like you can't do uh, when you scale it and it scales down perfectly. Anyway, going off topic, as I I seem to have done in my last tutorial. If you haven't watched that, watch it because it's a thrill ride. Uh, yeah. Also, if anyone's, I I don't know if I'm the only. Like everyone else likes it, but in R thirteen they changed the rotation, so it's meant to be it's meant to be like clever, I think, or have they not? Have they? 
Yeah, they, they have. They've done it. They do it so like wherever you click, it goes. It's like that's that's not what I want. I want I want the standard, you know. And also when you have a camera, it changes. Anyway, off topic again. Uh, you can do this method with any alpha kind of material. I could have made some examples, but I'm sure you guys are creative and imaginative enough to think of it. Uh, without my ingenious help. You know what, just because just cause we can, let's render Reno this out. I haven't really done anything on R13, as far as thing goes. Uh, as you can see, I have the Lovelay um, Grayscale Gorilla HDR Light Kit Pro 1.5. Um, uh, what should we go for? What should we go for, lads? Uh, overhead softbox. Oh dear. A softbox. As you can see, I'm doing this completely by myself. Also, I have made a light kit if anyone wants it. It's a bit crap though. So, yeah. That was an awful point to bring up. Anyway, this is literally going to be the worst render in the world. Um, let's add a bit of GI, change the irritance cache, or cache if you're posh. Uh, the ambient collision. And now you'll see how ridiculously fast my comp is. God, these two cores. Oh, God, blowing me away. Anyway. It's not what I'm trying to say, this is the most boring render ever, and the most low effort, but what I'm trying to get at, as you can see, the, the Amazon logo has, like, pasted itself on as if it was really there. Gah. But yeah, this method can be used in many of things. It's also used in far more complex layering of, like, real, like rocks, for example. You'll have a stone layer, mossy layer, dirty layer. Uh, yeah, There's, look, this is literally the most, well, a very simple version of it. I wouldn't say it's one of my basic tutorials. It's not quite the customize your layout. It's a bit more upmarket than that, but any hoodles, this has been a joy as always. Might have missed something out. I might regret it. I might put it in the description. I am still suffering from illness, uh, hence the overly nasal tendencies of my vocal cords or well, my voice uh, anything else? don't know the sound of me thinking is truly amazing fake typing alright uh, this has been terribly joyous uh, goodbye um, PS I, I did make OCD non-testing because that's just horrible